not describe myself as a particularly courageous person. Probably. You see, I harbor a lot of uncertainty about the future and my ability to effectively navigate future problems, and this leads me at times to a somewhat, you might say, conservative or risk-averse life approach. I find that I tend to lean away from those things that are may be too new and unfamiliar because I'm worried about failure or struggling or looking foolish. So in this respect, you might say that I have a lack of courage and, you know, I'd probably agree with you. How about you? Do you consider yourself to be a particularly courageous person? For my own part, this plain, it's safe, uh, life approach was turned on its head when I was obliged to complete a summer of what was called certified pastoral education at a hospital. So as a bit of background, every person who aspires to be a Unitarian Universalist minister must, at some point in their theological education, undergo this four-month experience of serving as a chaplain, often, as was the case for me, in a hospital setting. I was surprised when I started, and not in the pleasantly surprised kind of way, that the methodology for training chaplain students like myself was basically to throw them into the experience. And for someone who always wants to know the right thing to say and do, particularly in new and unfamiliar environments, this particular methodology was a recipe for fear and anxiety for me and I was decidedly not feeling very courageous. Each day for me felt like an emotional marathon, confronting uncertainty in each and every interaction. I would nervously approach each patient's room, knock on the door, sheepishly introduce myself and walk in. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm Chaplain Eli, and walk in. Rinse and repeat hundreds of times. Late nights and early mornings meant the days ran into each other. And so let me tell you, uh, it's hard work being a chaplain at a hospital. I have a lot of respect for people who do that full time. It was early on in this program when I had a transformative experience though. It all started one morning when I arrived to the hospital. See, I, I arrived to the hospital pretty early every morning, early enough when the sun has risen but so early that there were very few cars on the road or people on the sidewalks. As I wasn't a high-status doctor, I had the honor of parking at the distant lot each morning and walking a few blocks to the hospital. That morning, like all mornings, I waited for the crosswalk sign to turn while I looked up at the imposing tower of a building, thinking about all those folks in that building who might need spiritual care, and thinking about how I did not feel like I quite measured up to the task. I squinted up at the rows of windows reflecting in the morning sun and sighed. My eyes fell back down to the road where, to my amazement, I saw a group of three or four deer just galloping down the paved road each taking slightly different paths, darting and prancing here and there. Now, this is decidedly not a rural hospital, and it is located squarely in an urban center, so uh, this was, as you can imagine, one of the last things I expected to see. I stood there a moment, just entranced. The deer were clearly lost and no doubt confused, and it should go without saying they were not observing, or obeying uh, traffic laws, and they appeared uniquely exposed in this new and foreign environment. And in an instant, I thought, ah, oh, this is exactly what I feel like right now. In this way, it was something of a mystical experience, nature reflecting back to me deep and secretly felt things. The deer, as I watched them eventually pranced over a hill and out of sight, and so I continued on in my chaplaincy work, day after day, week after week. And the truth is I was hoping to feel more courageous about my work more quickly, but 
such as it is, it took a while. You see, I have often heard that courage is not the absence of fear, but acting despite fear. And on a deep intuitive level, I know this to be true, and yet I still waited for the fear to abide before I felt courageous in this new chaplaincy position. Uh, it might just be me, I don't know. Do you ever fall victim to this same assumption that uh, you have to feel courageous quickly in order to uh, really feel like you're being courageous? Well, it just wasn't the case for me. It took me a while. And over time, I suppose I did come to feel more courageous about my work and less worried about saying the wrong thing say, more willing to knock on doors and introduce myself to patients, I felt like I was being courageous for them, for something bigger than myself. And I noticed that there was an important difference in this. There's this, I think, unique source of bravery that emerges when you realize you aren't just being brave for yourself, but you're doing it to help or to serve others. And this was the turning point in my hospital chaplaincy work. That moment when I realized it's not all about you. It's not about you at all. That, that was when I felt the most liberated from fear. The sense of it really not being about me gave me courage. How about you? Have you ever felt more courageous when you needed to do something for others? It was certainly the case for me. And now naturally, we all have different fears, and so courage will look different to all of us. So stepping into a hospital to serve as a chaplain is certainly one way to confront fear, and it was the way that I found myself confronting fear, but there are many others. So I invite you to consider what courage looks like in your life. Is there a courageous act you've been putting off? Maybe it's a volunteer opportunity you haven't started yet, one you've been thinking about doing but are maybe worried you might look foolish so you keep hesitating to start. Or if you're like me, you might be someone who tends to avoid the phone. So, well then maybe courage means picking up the phone and calling a friend or family member to check in on them if you haven't heard from them in a while could be anything. So what comes to mind for you? Do you feel something in your gut right now, something inviting you to take a small step away from fear and toward courage? I'll leave you today with this closing thought. And it is returning to that morning when I saw the deer because there's one piece of information that I left out. And that is that cars, everywhere were patiently and thoughtfully slowing down and sometimes even full-on stopping to allow these deer to pass in, in front of them. Though the deer themselves may have felt in a strange and unwelcome environment, they were in fact surrounded by many others who were actually looking out for them. And I think this is true for us as well. We are rarely as alone and unsupported as we often feel. There are often people and networks of support all around us that maybe we may not immediately notice. So if you accept my invitation and you take the next courageous step, whatever that means for you, remember that you too are often surrounded by others who only want you to succeed. And we hope you see this community, our church community as one such place of support and encouragement. Take care of yourself and each other.